Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie, reporting for the Media Speaks. Kind of a long show today, and due to data transferring issues and getting computers upgraded and a bunch of boring stuff, I'm not sure I have enough data on the high def, which I'm pointing at now, low def over there. High def, I'm not sure. I can try. We'll see how it goes, so I'm going to shut up and just go. I'm with TheMediaSpeaks.com. How's that for an intro? Uh, Max Slavo, Georgia Governor, signs unprecedented guns everywhere bill. I was so happy to hear this that I made it our lead off story. This is great. This is allowing the common man to stick up for himself. To not be bullied and, uh, what is it they said in clockwork or it's tall chucked. The state of Georgia, as I butcher the Russian language, has just signaled an unprecedented new law that removes all handgun carrying and possession permissions to allow lawful residents the ability to carry their concealed firearms just about everywhere, including schools, churches, government buildings, nightclubs, and bars. You know what? I work in a nightclub, and if somebody in the building, the law-abiding citizen in the building has a gun, I'd feel more comfortable than if he didn't. The National Rifle Association hails it as the most comprehensive pro-gun reform legislation introduced in recent state history. Thank God. Lead-off story is happy today. Critics have apparently dubbed it the Guns Everywhere Bill, with former Representative Gabriel Giffords calling it the most extreme gun bill in America. But proponents of the legislation say that it's exactly what residents need and there's a link there to protect themselves from criminals. Amen. When you take guns away from criminals, only criminals have guns. It's not like they're going to turn them in. Proponents of the legislation, as I said, wisely noted this. Georgia Governor Nathan Deal assigned into law today what supporters call a historic victory for the Second Amendment. The new law called the Safe Carry Protection Act vastly expands where guns will be allowed in the state. As of July 1st, licensed gun owners in Georgia and visitors from 28 other states will be allowed to bring a gun into a bar without restrictions and carry a firearm into some government buildings. Under the law, school districts will be able to decide whether they want some employees to carry a firearm, and religious leaders can decide whether to allow registered gun owners to carry guns into their church, synagogue, or mosque. So he's not overriding the rights of the churches. God bless them. Uh, Yahoo.com, uh, Palestinians, Israel police clash at Jerusalem holy site. Dated 420. Friends, I am so unbelievably tired of both sides of this. I, I want to say animals, because as soon as you say animals, are you in favor of killing them? No. Both sides of this, the Arabs and the Jews, are like pigs. I swear, there's like, the, I mean, the ones that are causing the problem, not the shavish schmuck out there like I am. You know, the, the, the people that are promoting them, they're hardly even human. I, I'm sorry, they're not. I have very little sympathy for either one of them, really. Israeli police arrested 16 Palestinians at one of Jerusalem's most revered and politically sensitive holy sites on Sunday as they dispersed protesters opposed to any Jewish attempts to pray there. It's back and forth, it's back and forth. The land needs to be shared. There's no other outcome that's going to realistically happen here. You can say all day long, whatever side you side with is right. That's not going to help. The only thing that's going to help is them pulling up their diapers and getting over it. Now it's the Palestinians saying they can't pray there. And yes, other times I guess it, it, the Jews have done it saying Palestinians can't pray there. This is exactly why these people have been, have, let's face it, the Arabs created uh, um, algebra, which has led to, even though I suck at it, it led to great developments in the world. Uh, among other things, the Jews invented and perfected farming. But, you know, why, why have they been held back to such a large degree? And again, I know there's some powerful Jewish people that run things. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the culture as a whole. Um, why is this? Because this BS has been holding them back forever, more than uh, the restrictions on any of their own religions. 
A police spokesman said officers used stun grenades to disperse dozens of rioters who threw rocks and firecrackers at them at the site revered by Muslims as the Noble Sanctuary and the Jews as the Temple Mount in Jerusalem's walled Old City. And might I add, since uh, 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 we can't get along, so we're going to throw firecrackers at each other. And who is just sick of both sides of this? At this point, I mean, I, I, I could almost lose humanity here, you know what I mean? And they just kill each other and get it over with. No, you don't want to say that, because the realistic ramifications are that are a lot of innocent dead people, just like you and I. So no, I'm not going to go there. But I'm telling you, that's going to be the reaction from a lot of people when it happens. Because they're, like, they're sick of it. We're absolutely sick of it. Two officers were slightly injured and treated at the scene in the brief clash, the spokesman added. Five Palestinians were also slightly hurt, a Muslim clergyman said. Well, maybe they should let me pray there. Police spokesman Mickey Rosenfeld said the plaza near the Al Al Aqsa Mosque had remained open to visitors during the clash, which was confined to a small area. Police did not enter the mosque, he said. Again, a small number of people holding back the entire culture. Another eight Pal Palestinian protesters were arrested following a disturbance at the holy site on Friday. This is why people don't want this kind of thing in their country. This is why Sharia law can take it. This is why. Nobody wants any of this BS here. You're not bringing that to America. I mean, Bundy's ranch will look like a trip with Walt Disney World. Uh, friends... The United States of SWAT from the NationalReview.com. It's a very good article about, um, this, I'm saying this because I'm skipping part of it over. You guys are all going to click off and go to another faster moving show. It's a very good analogy between the Nevada uh, issue and too many SWAT teams or whatever. You can read the article, NationalReview.com, as I said. But I'm going to go ahead and quickly give you some of the stories here that are the meat and potatoes of it and why I wanted to make it part of TCV. Take the case of Kenneth Wright in Stockton, California, it says, who was visited by a SWAT team from the U.S. Department of Education in June of 11. Agents battered down the door of his home at 6 a.m., dragged him outside in his boxer shorts, and handcuffed him as they put his three children, aged 3, 7, and 11, so obviously they were quite dangerous, into a police car for two hours while they searched his home. Uh, the raid was allegedly intended to uncover information on Wright's estranged wife, Michelle, who hadn't been living with him and was suspected of college financial aid fraud. Now, how many people were zoning out? They're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, you need SWAT teams, Sam. Not everybody's as libertarian as you are. Maybe there were drugs in that house. You're being awful hard on him, Sam. Wait a minute. College financial aid for... You need a SWAT team for this. They're getting you acclimated to this, where you're growing up, and it's fine, and it's fine, and it's fine. It's what Hitler did with the Hitler Youth, and you don't need to go back that far. Watch a few documentaries on North Korea. Uh, Christelle uh, kind of waffles on some of the political stuff I watch. I now have her addicted to North Korean documentaries. Why? Because they've been raised to believe these ridiculously mind-numbing things and they just accept it as perfectly normal. Um, that the great leader was uh, born with talking, singing birds. That, uh, I don't mean the great leader Obama. Um, Kim, Kim Jong-un, un, unsuccessful, unintelligent, uh, uh, it's Oon, I know. Um, you can see it in the way that progress has been grind another culture whose beliefs have grinded them to a halt. And you're seeing it here as they get Americans used to it. If this is what a six or seven year old is used to, by the time he's in his 30s, it's just going to be normal. And his neighbor's going to get swatted for financial aid fraud. They're going to have rifles and guns and broken furniture and devastated lives traumatize kids for nothing. They're getting you acclimated to it. The year before the raid on Wright, a SWAT team from the Food and Drug Administration raided the farm of Daniel Olga. You guys remember I reported on that in Lancaster, PA. His crime was shipping unpasteurized milk across state lines to cooperative young women and children in Washington, D.C. because you're not allowed to take milk 
across state lines if it's not past your eyes. Friends, read the rest of the article. You get the point. This is out of control. The SWAT teams need greatly reined in. Friends, do me a favor. I went in Canton, Ohio. Uh, go to the Arcadia Grill if you want to know what they have that I can't get to on this little... Uh, little hat tip here. You can go to 330-454-6055. Dial it in. Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue in Canton, Ohio, has some of the absolute most delicious food that you will ever consume. You're going to want to go there. You're also going to want to check out their bar. They make drinks the way I like them. Remember when they used to put alcohol in them? So do they. Um, I, I always get the ravioli. I keep talking about them. I almost never get anything but the ravioli. So, I mean... It's very hard for me to critique their other dishes, although Christelle got chicken fingers, and I thought they were great. So, go to the Arcadia Grill when in Canton, Ohio. Also, Mike McLaughlin, awesome writer. You can get a hold of him at archangel underscore 44703 at yahoo.com. That is A-R-C-H-A-N-G-E-L underscore. Also, archangel 44703 at facebook.com. Well, why would you want to do that? Because you like to read, don't you? Really good fiction, good poetry, even working on a novel. You want to read those kinds of really good writing? Mike McLaughlin. I told you how to get a hold of it. Please do. Yeah, his stories, his poems, I, I'll probably give you a couple if you tell him you heard about it. But he's selling them, and uh, again, I've been saying it all along. Why are, one of your, uh, why are you advertising a writer? When's the last time you heard an advertisement for a writer on TV? Don't you think that could be one of the reasons that we have a culture dumb enough to think that Beyonce knows how to sing? Friends at telegraph.co.uk Saudi Arabia to begin the world's, building the world's tallest skyscraper. Now I know America hasn't had this for a minute, but remember when America used to lead in things? What do we lead in now? We've jailed more people in the world, including percentage-wise, than anybody else in the world, including Iraq, including the Sharia law people that you would just cracking on, including them. We jail more here. Um, numbers are vague, but all indications show that we jail more people, percentage-wise included, than North Korea. Um, but this is still bad news. One more thing that America just will not be leading in as we fall from grace and listen to Kesha. Saudi Arabia is scheduled to begin building the world's tallest tower next week, which will soar one kilometer into the sky when completed. The Kingdom Tower in the coastal city of Jeddah will measure 3,280 feet. That is 568 feet taller than the current Guinness Book of World Record holder Dubai's Bouja Khalifa, which stands at 2,716 feet. So not only are they going to whop America, which we could have built this uh, where the uh, Freedom Tower is going. Again, you know, Sam, you don't really need it. It's for prestige. You know what? Maybe America could use some prestige after the good that Bush and Obama have done to us. Well, we won't be getting any here. An estimated cost of $1.23 billion, the tower in Saudi where women can be stoned for driving, will require approximately 5.7 million square feet of concrete, 80,000 tons of steel for its 200 floors, and will take five years to complete according to the Saudi Gazette. How can they do that? Because they're smart enough to drill, and we're not. The tower overlooking the Red Sea, which they did not poison by drilling, even though environmentalists won't let us do it because they say we will, obviously it didn't happen, will feature a five-star, four-seasons hotel, apartments, office space, and an observatory. So don't tell me it's just prestige. It looks like there's going to be a lot of money there. They've even got apartments in place in case they get some kind of a, a, a economic meltdown and maybe there's less uh, businesses in it. Forethought and intelligence. Constructing the tower is not without many challenges. It says, firstly, that tower structure needs to be able to withstand the salt water of the nearby ocean. Consultants Advanced Construction Technology Service will be testing the strength of different concretes that can be used for the tower's 200 feet deep foundations. 200 feet. Secondly, wind load will be a problem for the gargantuan building. So the tower will change shape regularly to counter it. How cool is that? America used to do stuff like that. 
Gordon Gill of Adrian Smith plus Gordon Gill, the design architect for the building, told Construction Weekly that because it changes shape every few floors, the wind loads go around the building and won't be as extreme as a hitting solid block. Another issue will be the concrete for the floors. Listen to this. When Burj Khalifa was built, six million cubic feet of concrete was pushed through a single pump at night when temperatures were low enough to ensure that it will be set, which could be an option in Saudi. While the plans for the building are ambitious, Sang Dae Kim, the director of the Council of Tall Buildings, told Construction Weekly that building a tower a thousand meters into the sky was feasible. At this point in time, we can build a tower that is one kilometer, maybe two kilometers high. Any taller than that, we'd have a lot of homework to do, he said. Well, it won't be built in America. We're going to be living in mud huts in no time at all. Uh, also, telegraph.co.uk. Uh, wh what else? What else can America not be first in? How about China, on course to become the world's most Christian nation within 15 years? Now, I don't care whether or not you want to hear this or not. It's simple fact. Every country that embra has embraced the standards of Christianity has had a time in their life when they have done amazing. Us Christians call that being blessed. Uh, some non-believers will simply call that coincidence, but the point is it's happened without fail. Every time a major nation has abased Christianity, they do well. Also, every time a major country has debased Christianity, it has gone into a free fall. America? China. What, what's China been doing lately? Going up, 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 up. Well, there's another one of those coincidences for you. I mean, it, they would already own our asses if uh, if they were, weren't were run by people that let poison swine fall down their river. If 60% of their drinking water wasn't poisoned and they weren't run by communists, they would already own us and we'd probably be speaking Chinese. And you regular viewers know my aptitude for foreign language. That's going to be a real red letter day, isn't it? It is said to be China's biggest church, and on Easter Sunday, thousands of worshippers will flock to the Asian mega temple to pledge their allegiance not to the Communist Party, but to the cross. Meanwhile, on Monday, when I went to a local bar for comedy night, uh, all anybody did was take stabs at Christianity because it was so cool to take a pot shot at God. Wonder why your job sent overseas. Do I think they're linked? Yes. The 5,000 capacity Luishi Church, which boasts more than twice as many seats as Westminster Abbey and the 206 foot crucifix that can be seen for miles around, opened last year with one theologian declaring it a miracle that such a small town would be able to hold such, build such a grand church. God bless them. The 8 million euro building is the site of one of the most visible symbols of communist China's breakneck conversion as it involves into one of the largest Christian congregations on earth. That will be one of the things that bring communism down, or at least greatly diminished in that country, uh, mark my words. It is a wonderful thing to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It gives us great confidence, beamed Jin Hongson, a 40-year-old visitor who was admiring the golden cross above Luishi's altar in the lead-up to Holy Week. When did it become uh, something that you could be laughed at and spit on for in this country and cherished in China? What, what the hell? And again, I'm happy. God, I mean, God bless every one of them. If everyone in China believed in Jesus, then there would be no more need for police stations. There would be no more bad people and therefore no more crime, she added. Oh, uh, well, uh, obviously. Officially, the People's Republic of China is an atheist country, but that is changing fast, as many of its 1.3 billion citizens seek meaning and spiritual comfort that either communism nor capitalism seem to have supplied. And nor were either one meant to. The Founding Fathers did not want Christianity to replace God. So, I mean, again, that's, that's, a theocrat, that's a theocratic kingdom that I also wouldn't want to live under. Christ, uh, Christian congregations in particular have skyrocketed since the churches began reopening when Chairman Mao's scum bastard's death in 1976 signaled the end of the Cultural Revolution. So basically, America goes backwards in another good area. Well, we won't be building any really tall churches if you want to put the two articles together. Friends, two more stories. Uh, hopefully I got enough memory juice on the uh, high def for both of you. Um, if not, uh, youtube.com slash to correct views. The low def, which is you guys, will be uh, posted. Naturalsociety.com. I'm going to give it to you real quick. Four anti-cancer foods. There's a 
a few paragraphs at the beginning. You don't want those paragraphs. What are the foods? That's why you listen. Turmeric, also known as curcumin, now among the most are currently researched of fighting cancer-fighting foods. Turmeric has repeatedly been shown to be an effective cancer fighter and even block cancer growth. Previously found with links to reduce tumors by an astounding 81%, the naturally occurring compound found in turmeric curcumin, curcumin, why am I having so much trouble with that, exhibits numerous anti-cancer properties. Uh, sounds good to me. Papaya leaf abstract. Number two, the study conducted by University of Florida researchers Dr. Nam Dang and colleagues in Japan has documented papaya's powerful anti-cancer properties and impact against numerous, numerous lab-grown tumors and without the negative consequences of chemotherapy. That, is, that cannot be overstressed. The researchers used papaya leaf abstract for the study conduction with the anti-cancer effects being even stronger with the large dose of the extract. Ginger! Well, that's good news. I love ginger. Adding another to the list of cancer-fighting foods, ginger, and I don't mean the ginger snaps, which is immediately what Christelle wanted to eat. Oh, cookies are good for you. I heard about the correct views. No, you didn't. Ginger, which is found in limited qualities in ginger snaps. Adding another to the list of cancer-fighting foods, ginger, a cousin spice of super anti-substance turmeric, they're related is known for its ability to shrink tumors. The subject of one study based out of Georgia State University, whole ginger extract, that is not a ginger snap, Christelle. Whole ginger extract was revealed to shrink prostate tumor size by 56% in mice, and I would want my girlfriend to get prostate cancer. The anti-cancer properties were observed in addition to ginger's role in reducing inflammation as well as a rich source of life-enhancing antioxidants. That means you with Cro you guys with Crohn's and colitis, this will help you. And lastly, I'm now taking it in supplement form, garlic. I guess I'm really not a vampire. For centuries, the belief of garlic has been experienced by many cultures. For the treatment and prevention of disease, garlic status is one of the cancer-fighting foods is perhaps the most notorious. Scientists, scientists believe that the anti-cancer properties may be due to the production of something known as hydrogen sulfide. Also known to protect the heart, researchers at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine found that damage to the heart muscle as a result of a heart attack is halted by directly injecting uh, hydrogen sulfide into mice. How about the cancers I was talking about? Well, it's been known to help prevent uh, cancers including prostate, breast, and colon cancer. It's also been recognized by the Food and Drug Administration, and they usually dispel any of that. Uh, because they're tied to the hip with Big Pharma, but even they have seen so much proof that they can't deny it. That brings me to the dumdy of the day, hosted uh, by uh, hosted.ap.org, Associated Depressed, as Rush says. Fox executive fired over Flight 370 charity email. I'll read the story, but in case the camera cuts off. Basically, because the person sent it from his Fox email account, and he worked at Fox, Fox fired him for basically charity work under their name for trying to help people. And for those of you that have been living in a cave, uh, we're missing a, a jet airliner. It's been over a month now. It might be two months. I don't know the exact date. We've been missing. Look up Correct Views Malaysia. I covered it in a few other episodes. We will never find this plane. God forbid you would try to help those people. Again, Fox has that, that Republican lean, and it reminds me of why I am a libertarian and not a freaking Republican. I am telling you, people. A veteran Fox executive, a veteran, who used her company email account to plan aid for loved ones of the missing Malaysia airplanes passengers flight has been fired. Darlene Tipton, who was Vice President of Standards and Practices at the Fox Cable Networks Group, said Saturday she had wanted to arrange swift financial aid to families and other loved ones, God forbid, sparing them lengthy court fights. She said she began by emailing Sarah Bach, B-A-J-C, an American whose boyfriend Philip Wood was a passenger on Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, and who has made frequent TV as appearances since the March H. disappearance. So if she was going to set up a fraud in Fox's name, she sure picked a very obvious person. 
I think I'm about to lose my high def people. Good night. God bless. You can donate at the correct views on Hotmail.com. All money you give to me goes to a better show. Friends, a Fox spokesman Scott Grogan said Tipton's conduct and communications violated company policy. Citing privacy concerns, he declined to discuss particulars, but he said as soon as we become aware, we took appropriate steps. He confirmed that Tipton has left the company. Oh, yeah, well, glad you got rid of somebody like that. And it sounded like a real detriment. Tipton was with Fox for a quarter century before her April 9th dismiss dismissal. She said she plans to continue with her initiative soliciting contributions through the crowd, crowdfunding website GoFundMe. Now, come on, this lady lost her job for this. GoFundMe.com, go look it up. We want to raise money for families to give them immediate relief, Tipton said during a phone interview to Los Angeles. Otherwise, they could be in court for years. China is about to become the most Christian nation in the country. And we, in this country, treat our real godly people. I don't know, she could, she could worship the moon men, for all I know. But we, somebody that actually shows what I would call Christian love, we spit on them. Well, again, I don't know if she's Christian or not. I have no idea. A condition for accepting the money. Yeah, she, she hopes to raise. Recipients must waive the right to seek legal remedy. So therefore, she wasn't doing anything hidden. She wasn't doing anything illegal. She wasn't doing anything nefarious. And Fox spit on her. That's why they get the dumdy of the day. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Dunce Cap of the Month comes out once a month. And it's the 25th, so we are very close. Um, I send out a Dunce Cap. I've sent them to the FBI. I've sent them to police stations. I've sent them to judges. I've sent them to banks. What's going to be the dumbest thing this month? You're going to have to find out. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. I already gave you uh, how to donate earlier. Correct views at Hotmail.com. Thank you. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are posting all the time. And the best thing you can do to help us the most, hit share and hit subscribe. Good night, friends. God bless. And as always, thanks for tuning in.